Minasang, konnichiwa, Samurai Engineer Desk. In this video, let us continue discussion about system design, activity-based costing. So we are currently on module 3.05. Let us uh, proceed. In this um, module, we have learning goal to record the flow of cost in an activity-based costing. How can we do that? So let us uh, take a look on that activity in this module. If you can prepare uh, notes or or just decide to rewatch or review this uh, video later, you can uh, choose to do so. Okay. Cost flow in an activity-based costing. For example, we have one example company here, Sarvik company, which uses activity-based costing. The company has five cost pools shown below. What do we mean by cost pools? So we mean machine related, purchase order, machine setup, product testing, and general factory activity. So Cost pool meaning the type of activity, okay? machine related activity, purchase orders activity, machine setup activity, product testing activity, general factory activity. Okay, so what are the measures again to review? Activity measures are like machine hours, number of orders, number of setup, number of tests, or direct labor hours. Okay, those are example of activity cost pool and activity measure for Sarbi company. Okay. So we have what? Estimated overhead cost for the next column. So the third column here. On the first line, first line we have what? $175,000. Second line, $63,000 and so on. Up to the uh, pip one, $300,000. If you uh, use your calculator and get the total, maybe you can confirm that the total is about or equal to $790,000. Okay. What is uh, the next column? The expected activities for the month, for the quarter, for the year. In this case, I think this is for one year. Okay? I think this is for one year. So we have what? 5,000 machine hours for the first line. Okay. 700 orders. Okay. For the second one, third one is 460 machine setup. And the fourth one, how many testing? Product testing is uh, being done for those company who have quality control. They want their uh, product to have certain acceptable quality before they will offer it for public consumption, for public use. Okay? So, before they will uh, offer this into uh, commercial uh, uh, establishment, they will what? Test their product. So product testing. How many testing? 200 testing in this example. So the PIP one is 21, uh, 25,000 direct labor hours. Okay. So you'll notice again, again and again, you'll notice that if we are talking of activity-based costing, there are different activity units of measure, activity measure, no? So machine hours, number of borders, they are different from one another. But in conventional one, there is only one activity measure for all. 
of the activity. So that is uh, one main difference. No? And uh, for example, here, let us go to the next slide. Cost flow in an activity-based system. Activity rates are determined as follows. So given the table in the previous slide, we have what? Divide the estimated overhead cost by the expected activity. Before, because we are what? We are planning for the future. We are using previous data. We are using historical data, but we are planning for the future. That is the uh, job of a manager. That's why it is managerial accounting. We are supporting the managers in their what? Decision making. We are supporting them with correct information. Okay? Correct information meaning historical value. So that they can, they can what, they can uh, properly decide for the future of the company. Okay, so uh, one hundred seventy-five thousand for the first line, divide by five thousand. If you use your calculator, you can confirm that the value is equal to activity rate of thirty-five dollars. Okay, that is activity rate. This is how we compute activity rate under the uh, activity-based costing. We already know the conventional computation in our previous, for example, financial accounting. But for activity-based costing, this is how we compute the activity rate. So we have what? $35 per machine hours for the first line. For the second line, we have what? 63,000 divided by 700. That is equal to $90 per order. Okay. How about machine setup? How much per setup? 460. So 92,000 divided by 460. That is $200 per setup. Okay. Product testing. 160,000 dollars divided by 200 uh, test. Therefore, how much? The rate is 800 dollars per test. And general factory, uh, 300,000 dollars divided by 25,000 direct labor cost. That is 12 dollars per direct labor hours. Okay. And you will notice the highest value here that we computed is the product testing. That's why when we test the product, we do not test all of the product. We just test, for example, per 1,000, we only test three, three units. So we do not test all of the product. There are systems, there are companies that test all of the product and that is very expensive. That is costly because testing have the greatest amount, the highest amount of rate. As shown here, one company has $800, which is very high compared to other costs of overhead. Okay. So overhead is applied on the basis of actual activities during the year. So we have uh, application of overhead cost. Okay. So we have what? The second column, we have activity rate, which, which is the <coughs> which are the values we computed on the previous on the previous uh, slide. No? 35, 90, 200, 800, and 12. So if you can recall, the highest is under product testing, the port, the port line, $800 per test. That is the port one. So that is activity rate for product testing. And uh, the third column here is actual activity. 
actual activity meaning <coughs> we use we computed activity rate from the previous year or previous accounting cycle and we are going to use this if we are a manager where are you going to predict uh, what will happen this year and after some time we will have what an actual an actual uh, uh, values because uh, forecast is different from the actual no so uh, if we are uh, planning we are actually forecasting no but now you can measure the actual if the activities already happen okay so for example the activity already happened and on the first line for example there are but 4600 uh, machine hours for the whole year so therefore you can what multiply that total machine hours which is 4600 to the activity rate which is 35 dollars if you multiply that please compute use your calculator use your calculator the answer would be 161,000 dollars for the second line for example you have an actual activity wherein there are 800 purchase orders happen on that year and the next one is what how many machine setup 500 machine setup happen on that year the fourth one is 160 tests imagine there are only 160 tests for the whole year there are so many products involved okay there are so many products that we produced the whole year, but there are only 160 te 190 tests. So companies usually do not test all of the products. Okay? Not all. For example, 100 products, they will only test three. Okay? So for 1,000 products, they will only test three. But the level of quality will remain the same if the quantity of if the testing protocol if the testing policy is strict like in japan i have an experience of being a quality control in japan i work for about uh, four years uh, going to five years almost five years no? quality control very strict quality that's why the japan product quality is very uh, desirable high quality products okay so there are only a small number of tests 190 tests in this example the pip one is 23000 direct labor hours so multiply by 12 you can arrive at Two hundred seventy-six thousand dollars, and then you total all of this, all of the values, total overhead, applied. Applied meaning that is now actual, no? Actual, no? Hey, seven hundred sixty-one. If you use your calculator and total the five different activity cost. Okay, so cost flow in activity based costing system selected transactions recorded by company a raw materials purchased on account. Okay, so let us uh, think about this. Okay, these are the list of transactions being recorded by. A particular company number one raw material purchased on account so bookkeeping this is a bookkeeping activity so they uh, rec recorded nine hundred fifteen thousand dollars for raw material purchase 
The next one is letter B, raw material used in production, $900,000, meaning $810,000 direct and $90,000 indirect materials. Okay? So there are direct and indirect, indirect materials. We know that direct materials are those materials that go directly to be used as as uh, the, the product material. No? While indirect material are those materials that are consumables in use. Uh, those are materials used in other necessary supporting process. For example, wrapping paper. Wrapping paper is not a material uh, of the product itself. But it is necessary in order to wrap the product. In wrapping the product is what? Protecting the product. Avoiding damage. To protect product, to avoid damage, it is important to have wrapping material. But wrapping material is indirect material. Because this wrapping material is not a part in the assembly of product. For example, your product is what? Uh, cell phone. Wrapping material is not a part of a cell phone. But wrapping material helps protect uh, cell phone to be uh, as new as possible until it uh, transferred to the hands of the customer or the buyer. So the product, the cell phone, has to look like brand new as possible. No? Without which, the uh, product would look like secondhand and it will not uh, be acceptable to the buyer. So meaning wrapping papers are important, but it is not direct material. It is indirect. Number three, factory labor cost. $370,000, meaning $95,000 direct and $275,000 indirect. Also, the labor cost have direct and indirect. If you can review, if you can recall, direct labor is the uh, human movement, the human work that is for the purpose of producing cell phone. For example, the product is cell phone. The human activities that is producing cell phone. Assembling cell phone. Okay? Please turn off your thumb. Sir, I'm plus one. Please turn off your thumb. Okay. So let us uh, return back in our discussion. So, for example, indirect labor is the type of labor like security guard. It is important. Without the security guard, maybe there are thieves that will take all of the products, but security guard is not a direct labor because security guard will not produce cell phone. Okay, so that is indirect labor. Okay, also the the um, the what the cargo cargo operator the uh, the one who is transporting the products from one place to another. For example, warehousing. Those uh, type of people works uh, are important also, but they are indirect. Warehousing is not the type of work that will make cell phone. They are just properly storing the cell phone. Okay? They are important, but they are not direct. Okay? Number four. 
depreciation of factory assets. Okay? Given $180,000. Number five, miscellaneous manufacturing overhead cost incurred on account, $230,000. Miscellaneous. So meaning to say, miscellaneous is a technical term. It's a technical term for uh, accounting, which means others, no? other cost. No? And uh, let Number seven, number six, manufacturing overhead applied. So this is the part wherein we computed no? $761,000. And number seven, goods costing uh, $1,650,000. So these are what? The uh, bookkeeping, the recording of the transaction being made by the company. Okay. okay. So, cost flow following journal entries would be used to record transaction in this example, A and B. Okay. So, after you have those transaction recorded, we are now going to put it in journal. Okay, recording transactions from scratch into a journal is actually called journaling. Okay, okay. journal reporting or journaling. Okay, so we have two, what, for example, raw materials, that is 915. <clears throat> okay, so accounts payable. 915. You will notice debit. Take note. Debit is always in the left side. Credit is always in the right side. Debit, credit. Okay. Debit should always equal to credit. 915 for debit, 915 for credit. Okay. What do we mean by raw materials? Accounts payable, work in process, manufacturing overhead. These are the names of Account, account names. They are account names. Or what we can say, record name. Name of the record. Okay? Account names. Okay? So, so the account name raw materials increased by 915. That's why it is debit. So, our company has to pay that raw material later on, that's why it is credit. Okay? And letter B, work in process. Meaning the raw material is now being used uh, in making the product. For example, what? What product? CD, DVD, cell phone. Okay? Work in process out of 915. Okay? Out of the raw materials in the stock room, in our stock area, 810 of those material are being processed. They are called work and process. They are not yet finished, not yet. They are currently being worked on by the, by the staff, by the engineers, by the technician, by the by the workers, okay? And uh, what? Uh, manufacturing overhead, 90,000. Therefore, raw materials being uh, uh, used here in letter B is 900,000, okay? So, that is transaction A and B. If you can look back, okay? You can look back A and B. In look back, A and B, transaction A, raw material purchase on account. What do we mean by on account? Meaning loan. If we say on account, purchased on account, purchased without paying cash. Purchase on account, we can say purchase on cash. Oh, okay, that is cash. But purchase on account, 
that is loan. So we have to pay it later. That's why it is called what? Accounts payable, letter A, letter A. Look at letter A. So the transaction A and B is what? Okay. Please um, prepare your journal sheets and follow this. Write this up. Write this. Please write in your journal sheets. Okay. As a practice, so that you can have practice. Okay. Letter A. Raw material purchase on account. Try in your journal sheet. Raw material. And then a debit, 915. And then accounts payable, credit, 915. So letter B, raw material used in production, 900. Meaning 810 direct and 990 indirect. How to do it? Okay. Labor cost. Uh, okay. So do it like this. Okay. Okay. Manufact Our uh, labor cost is overhead. That is indirect. No, indirect. We are talking of materials being used. Work in process. 810. In overhead, 90. That's why we utilize material of what? Amounting to nine hundred thousand dollars. Okay, nine hundred. So the third one, letter C. Let us go to letter C. Please, please take a screenshot. Please take a screenshot of this. What uh, seven seven transaction? Please take a screenshot because so that we cannot go back and forth. So that uh, I will minimize going back and forth for this uh, example alone. Please take the screenshot and uh, try to uh, record this in your journal sheets, okay? Okay, so let us go to letter C. So this is the letter C. Okay, work and process, okay. Okay, uh, work and process ninety five thousand uh, manufacturing overhead two hundred seventy five thousand debit because they increase. Because they increase the work in process, they increase manufacturing overhead. That's why it is debit. Salaries and wages payable, we have to pay it. So that is credit. Okay, what about the number four? Number four, uh, manufacturing overhead, 180,000. So look at your screenshot. Look at your screenshot for letter number four or letter D. That is okay, uh, now let us go to what? number five. So manufacturing overhead again, $230,000. But do not, do not put dollars in journal. You only put dollars or peso in your uh, transaction record you the first one the first transaction record the uh, the uh, listing of transaction but here in journal do not put dollars also in ledger do not put dollar sign okay so this is number five if you can look back at number six so this is how you record this number six in the journal. This is the journal. Okay. So work and process again. Debit and manufacturing overhead. Credit. Okay. And lastly, number seven. 
uh, we have now a finished product, finished goods. How many uh, cell phone did we produce? 1.65 million amounting to 1.65 million cell phone of cell phone was produced. Okay. Okay, finished goods. So meaning to say the work and process, all of the work and process is now transferred to finished product. Okay. So they will come a time that uh, all those uh, products being uh, manufactured will be finished. And that is called finished goods. Okay. So those are journaling. So that is the flow. Okay. Okay. After journaling, we have ledger. Posting is the terminology we say when we are recording into a ledger. Recording to a ledger, that means posting. Or we can also use T accounts. Ledger is also similar to T accounts. So you will notice letter T in this. Uh, no. You can use your ledger sheets. I already talked about you preparing journal and ledger sheets. You can buy, but you can also prepare your own by using ball pen and uh, ruler. Okay, so. Manufacturing overhead from the journal, from the journal, all of the account names with manufacturing overhead, put it here. Okay. And just follow. For example, for example, letter C. I will give one example. Letter C. Letter C is 275. This letter C is what? Is in the right side, meaning it is debit. Letter C is in the right side, DB 275. It is called manufacturing overhead. Okay, I will show you. Let us go back. Let us go back. Let us go back to letter C. There. Letter C. Manufacturing overhead. The second line. The second line, manufacturing overhead, 275. Meaning to say, all of the record that you will going to post, posting, post in the ledger came, have to be coming from journal. So all the journal entries will be transferred to ledger for posting. Okay? So that is what I'm going to say. No? So first is, Transaction record, number two, journal entries, then number three is ledger posting. So we are now posting into ledger. Not only the manufacturing overhead, all of the account names have to be posted. Separately, manufacturing overhead in the same place. Okay, other, for example, accounts payable in one in one ledger. Manufacturing overhead in one ledger sheet. Okay. What else? Uh, work in process, another ledger. Okay. So all of the account names. So there are several account names that we talk about. So what is uh, the meaning of balance here? You have to compute total. You have to use your calculator. 90,000 plus follow, follow my lead, follow my lead. 90,000 plus 275,000 plus 180,000 plus 230,000. As you can see in the uh, monitor, minus, okay, minus 761,000. <clears throat> Now, if the answer is positive, you have to write it on the right side. That's why it is written down on the right side. 
right side is debit. Okay? On the left side is credit. If the answer in your calculator is negative, do not, do not uh, write the symbol negative. Instead, write it on the right side. Write it on the right side. Because the right side is credit. Okay? So if the answer is negative. If the answer is positive, write it on the left side. So if you use your calculator, as I said, the answer would be positive and 